We bought this truck for $500, and we're gonna race it 500 miles through the deserts of Mexico. But if we wanna make it to the finish line or even survive this race, we've got a few upgrades to make. So we're starting with the most obvious shortcomings of this truck, the suspension. We want our truck ideally to be able to hit whoops at speed, hold traction through the wash, power through desert brush, and handle just about anything the desert can throw at it. So to do that, we bought all this. Now this all may look very complicated because it is, but as we go through and install each component, we'll talk about what it is and how it works. So what did we spend $17,000 on, you might ask? Well, we got a weld it yourself I-beam kit and reverse shackles from Giant, coilovers, rear shocks, and bump stops all from King. We got Deaver leaf springs, a shock hoop kit, limit straps, additional hardware like heim joints, and of course, some raw materials for all the fabrication we'll have to do. Once you add in taxes and shipping, you're looking at $17,000 worth of high-end suspension components for a $500 truck that's 30 years old. Dude, nice. Now this suspension install isn't gonna be quite as simple as a lot of other suspension installs that we've done in the past. We're gonna to have to tear the truck down a little further than normal and this is gonna require some fabrication. And everything's way bigger than I'm used to. So we got some learning to do. And up and rotate. Pivot! <laughs> Two, three. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> All right, now before we get too far along, I wanted to talk about the suspension on the Ranger. And part of the reason we bought this Ranger is that it has I-beam front suspension. Now what that means is that there are two beams going across the front that basically are responsible for holding the hub to the car and the wheel to the car. But what it doesn't give you is adjustability over camber. But for the most part, that's not that big of a deal on trucks. If it was a track car, you'd want to have adjustable, determinable camber like you'd have on a double wishbone setup or even a McPherson strut setup. Uh, so you can dial in your camber and get your handling just the way you want it on the track. But on a truck like this, we're more concerned with travel. So we got an I-beam truck and we're gonna be installing longer I-beams. So with a short I-beam, the same amount of angular range, you get this much travel. If you make that I-beam longer, look how much more travel you get. And maybe a disadvantage of twin I-beam setup is that once you weld this thing in place, that's it. It just goes with the range of the arm and the camber changes drastically throughout the range. But what it gives you is really good contact between the tires and the ground. Even when the body's super rolled over, your outside tire is gonna be down on the ground. It's gonna look cool and it's gonna be great to drive. It's gonna be a ripper. All right, Dylan. What? This is a microphone. I'm gonna place it on your person. I'm scared. Right there, a little magnet will hold it on. This is Dylan. Test. Hi everybody. He's gonna be helping us out on this build. He knows a lot more about these trucks than we do. Dylan was kind enough to put a whole list of work together for us, all the tasks we need to do for this job today. What do you think are gonna be our biggest challenges for this build? Front beams and front radius arms. Which for the front end, we right have to back. pretty much so we're kind of find our camber, find our caster, and we have to have locate everything we're gonna want. Bolts gonna take a lot of um, trial and error. A big thing and then we have to have bolts full bump, bump, full droop, we have to go with centers, lots of fabrication. Yeah. That's pretty much. So yeah, this should be pretty interesting. Okay, we've got the axle, diff, brakes, and leaf springs out of the Ranger. And this stuff is all going away because it's way too weak for what we want to do with the truck. We're gonna be putting huge tires on this thing and hopefully some big power under the hood. So with those things, we would just snap these axles and explode this diff. So we've got much beefier components to replace with and they're pretty sweet. Every part that we take off is literally one quarter the size of the part that we bought. How heavy is this thing gonna be? Once all this gets installed, we're gonna need somewhere to test it. Good thing today's sponsor is Onyx Off-Road. With Onyx, you get access to thousands of trails with detailed information like duration, difficulty, elevation, and more. You can track your waypoints and even build custom routes that you can share with your friends. This is an app that all of us at Donut 100% use and we highly recommend you download it, especially if you plan on driving off-road like us. Because even if you have no service, the Onyx app works offline so you can always know your exact location. And if you become an elite member, you'll gain access to exclusive discounts to top brands like Fox, Warn, and Method. Plus, elite members get public and private land data so you always know what trails are legal or illegal to explore. And for a limited time, you can get this sick Onyx beanie when you purchase an elite membership. It's warm, it's comfortable, and it's all yours if you click the link below and download Onyx Off-Road. 
and sign up to be an elite member. But hurry up. You can only get one of these things for a limited time, so come on, come on. Click the link. Let's go ahead and click it. All right, it's day two. Yesterday we got all the suspension removed from the truck, and today it's time to start the process of putting the new stuff on. The first thing we gotta do is assemble and install the mounts for the suspension. So today no actual suspension will go on, but we are gonna install all the points that will allow us to mount our new suspensions. We got my boy Mike Day here to help us with some of the fabrication and welding. You might remember him from some of the videos I've had him help us out with in the past, like the E36 roll cage. Dylan's still here. We got a lot of hands on deck. No, we actually have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Okay, right now I'm basically just cleaning up the frame rail so that we can in the future weld on our new suspension pickup points. So I'm just getting this down to bare metal, cleaning up the rusty bits, getting all the junk off, and we'll be ready to weld on the new stuff. Let's see if Dylan has any pictures, because this seems tweaked to me. This should be touching right here. Oh yeah, look at that inch gap. Yeah. So, um, what I'm gonna end up doing is just basically cut it off at this bend. I'm gonna fit up the rest of the bracket here, because that all lines up nice. And then I can line this cut piece off back on this K-member and figure out where it fits the best, zap it back together, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Okay, so our upper suspension mounts are gonna come off that frame rail and come straight up here into this area, which means that a lot of the stuff that currently lives in this area needs to go. So I'm working on taking the windshield washer fluid tank and the overflow tank out. We're gonna have to probably get rid of this air conditioning stuff and probably a handful of other things, but ultimately that's okay. This engine is gonna be out of here in the future, so we can change whatever we want. We just gotta kinda keep it running for now. So that's what we're gonna do. Gotta make some room. So we got all the brackets fit. We had to trim the shock mount to fit around the new beam mount. And then uh, we're gonna tack this side up because it fits pretty good. We're gonna go to the other side, make sure it's the same. Then we'll tack that side in, throw the crossbar in, and then we can burn everything in for real. Yeah, that's it. That, yeah, I don't, you don't need me anymore, that was great. Crossing Jerry's been doing this really massive. fun thing. <laughs> Tell him. I cross stuff off when it's not done, just because it's fun. <laughs> And then it was like, oh, what? I was like, damn, who knocked that out? Who knocked that out? I did. <laughs> All right, so while they're working on the front, I'm gonna get to working on the rear. I'm gonna clean some things up with a wire wheel, and then I'm gonna install the leaf spring pickup points, which should be pretty easy. They bolt into place in existing holes on the frame. Well, we gotta find hardware. I hear it's missing. I'm just making a list of all the hardware we're missing. Hardware, tabs, bungs, shock tabs, bump mounts. Everything like that. So we can order it all tonight. Mike has a lot of runway of things that he can do to the truck and set him up for success, you know? Because I'm not gonna be here, because I'm leaving. Today's my last day. I know it's been a short run, but it's been a good one. And I, I like to burn out fast, you know? So. All right, so we got the new I-beam mounts in place. These are the stock ones. This is where they were mounted. Uh, not literally, but same distance. Uh, as you can see, the new one is even further out. That means the wheel's gonna be sitting out further from the fender. I mean, now we have a much longer I-beam and that's gonna give us more suspension travel, which when going over whoops and going over jumps is gonna give us better contact with the ground. We put more power down and go faster. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff to do, but unfortunately we've come to a bit of a slow spot. We're missing hardware for the spindle and knuckles, a set of studs that we need to procure. We're also missing hardware for the rear leaf spring mounts, which, oh, there he is! In no time flat, Hever's back with the hardware for the leaf spring, so that's good. That'll speed us back up. So we're doing what we can. Mike's out there working on building the I-beams. We do have some flat pieces that we sort of have to mimic with tubes. So Mike's got the bender out. He's gonna bend some stuff up to match those flat pieces, and then it will all be welded together, and we'll have some big honking I-beams. And they look similar. That's, yeah. that's what we're going for. Mike has just gotten done tacking together the front I-beams and threw the first one on the truck and we thought, oh my God, that thing looks long. And well, it is. The wheel is in a different zip code from the truck. So we realized that these are made to be trimmed. Basically, we gotta figure out where we want the wheel to sit. We're gonna pretty much make the front axle about an inch or two wider than the rear axle. And once we figure that out, take some measurements, we'll cut the ends off these I-beams and then we'll weld everything on from there. We are gonna need to trim them, but before we can do that, we need to mock up our radius arms. That'll 
basically just locate the I-beam front and rear because obviously you want it to do this, but you don't want any of this. So the radius arm connects it to the truck back here. So we'll get those mocked up, then we'll measure and cut the fronts, get the ends welded on, and be a few steps closer to an operating truck. All right, so we're gonna try to land the radius arm mounts on the frame where they belong, and then we're gonna get rid of this cross member and make something as a trans cross member to tie between them. Right now I'm taking the leaf springs apart, basically so that we can have just one leaf essentially or whatever the smallest pack is. And we can put that on the truck and then we can jack it up without lifting the whole truck and see where we're gonna, you know, basically have our bump stops go and get full compression dialed in. All right, here at the back, we've got our giant uh, inverted shackle. Normally, you would have to do a lot of math to figure out what length this shackle should be. That'll affect your spring rate and your general ride and spring travel. But luckily, we just bought a kit that goes into the factory mounting points and has all the math figured out for us. So all we had to do was put it on, bolted right up. This is all very important. And luckily, there's a lot of companies out there that have already figured it out for guys like me. More parts of the pile. More parts of the pile. We've got a pretty cool little setup here. So we've got the axle at full bump, full compression, and we've got a nice little wooden spacer up here just to keep the axle gapped away from the frame so that we never actually crash the axle into the frame, especially if you imagine that our Delrin at the end of our bump stop is worn out, this thing will continue to get shorter and shorter. So we wanna make sure that if this is at its shortest, even without the Delrin, we can't crash the axle into the frame. And then we need to mount our cans here for the bump stop so that they can hang out here. So what we got going on is can hovering, thank you. I've got two inches of tape sitting on top, hovering this here because that two inches is what we need with this at full squish. So that's just kind of, thank you, kind of holding that there in space so that we know where to mount it. And we're in the process of trying to mount it. That's why this is all cleaned up. We're gonna do some tubing across the cans and straight to the frame here. So the bump stop will live basically exactly where it is, but eventually it will be connected by metal. So we're getting pretty close to some stuff. Bump stops should be able to go in soon. So I'm working on these little guys that are gonna go here. And Mike is working on crossing up the uh, shock hoops here for a little bit of structural support between the two. So this is just adding a little bit of uh, reinforcement for the bump stops. This is where the bump stops will live and that's gonna take a lot of force if we bottom out our suspension. So we wanna make sure that they are properly reinforced so that they don't bend or worse, twist our frame in or you know ruin anything else. So extra tube there, that'll make that nice and strong. We'll get an X going through there. That'll make that nice and strong and look cool. And then we can really put the suspension on. <laughs> yep, nailed it. What are you doing? Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> We are currently estimating ride height and basically we're just putting the axle to what will be halfway through the travel of the shock. All the way open, they are 42 inches long, all the way closed, 26 inches. So we're targeting about 34 inches of basically distance from the upper shock mount to where the lower shock mounts will go and we'll call that ride height. Weld on the shock tabs and then once everything comes back together, we'll know for sure what ride height actually is, but halfway through the travel is a good place to start. All right, so now that we're at our ballparked ride height, we're gonna set the pinion a couple degrees down from the trans, and that's because with leaf springs, the pinion's gonna wrap upwards under load. So we're trying to compensate for that now. So we're gonna tack these mounts. That'll get us in our ballpark place. If we have to shim it later, we'll have that option too. We got the shock on. We're gonna lift the rear end all the way up to the bump stops and see if they're happy. Stuff doesn't hit each other. Cool. Hot dog. Oh yeah. Tell me where to go. Forward. Uh -huh. Up. Down. Up. Down. Down. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now twist uh, left. Your left. left. Feels good. We got a wheel on the truck and a shock and a lot of other stuff. It's coming together. 
All right, the upper stuff is all fully welded, so now it's time to take the axle and the leaf springs back out of the truck so we can put the leaf springs fully back together to their full stack, and we'll finish welding up the stuff on the axle while it's out of the truck, and then we can put it all back in, and we'll be able to put this thing on the ground in the back, which is exciting. That's a neat noise, Job. That's my alarm clock in the morning. All right, boys. Come on. Okay. Looks amazing, guys. How's the front looking? Oh! Jimmy! All right, since these are cut to length beams, I'm using this piece of wood just to like bump up against the frame so I have a straight edge. And then I'm measuring off of that so that I can cut the beams in the same spot so the track width is the same on each side. I'm going 13 inches off of there and that'll let us find a spot where I can line up the spindle. I'm gonna line it up by the bottom and then we're gonna set the camber and then trace this out, cut it so it fits and then do the same on both sides. All right, we got some stuff to cross off the list here, Job. Yes. Uh, let's see, install slash mock up leafs and oh, rear end. Yeah, that That's totally good. gone. Weld on shock tabs and hoops. Cross that sucker. Yes, sir. Boom. Okay, sure. two big cross offs. Yeah. Though. Let me get one of these. Back to work. So I have the I-beams all welded up. I'm starting to mock them up onto the truck. I'm gonna check my camber. I wanna make sure that it's pretty even either side. We do have camber uh, adjusters here for the upper ball joint, and we have a degree basically either direction, but I was shooting for even either side, so that's what I'm shooting for, but it'll be fine with this much adjustment. Also, ignore this whole hub brake spindle assembly. That's for a later episode. All right, right now our radius arm is a little bit too long, causing it to interfere with the endpoint of our other I-beam. Okay, the cross member that is interfering with our passenger side I-beam is about to get cut. That's clear. Woo, that's close. That's good though. Okay, we've got the passenger side beam and radius arm pretty much all done. So now it's time to make some room for those beefy ass wheels and tires we got. We're gonna start with removing all this, then we'll throw the wheel and tire on, cycle it up, and if we need to make more room, I'll cut more. And if we don't need to make more room, we'll have a party. So I gotta get to cut in it so we can get to the party. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem, and this is about as far as we can trim before we get into the firewall. Okay, so we have more clearance, but we still don't have quite enough. We're close, but we're still biting in here, and we're gonna have to make some room down here. I don't know if this is the best solution. Yeah, I don't think it is either. So since there's a bunch of clearance issues with the tires, I'm gonna add three inches to these beams. We already cut them, so that's kind of a bummer, but I've made these sleeves here, so I'm gonna sleeve it inside, so we'll get the space we need, and it'll be plenty strong. There it goes. Whoa, baby, that's a big one. There's a red star next to it. Wow. Okay, we've got clearance on the passenger side, so we've taken a first pass at clearance on the driver's side, so now we're gonna pick the wheel up and see how close we are. We're definitely gonna have to do a little bit more bashing, but I wanna make sure everything meets up real nice. So I wanna get this clearance knocked out tonight. That'll be the last thing for the evening, and then we'll come back tomorrow, finish some things up, and hopefully get them big boys in the truck.
Uh, it is hopefully the final day of suspension install, so we're jamming. We're trying to figure out how to get the shock in there, so we gotta put some lower shock mounts on the axle, and we've also gotta figure out the bump stops. We've got the rest of the day, and I think that'll be enough time. We're gonna have to put Jimmy to work. Yes, it's true. I had this whole speech in mind I was gonna make Give and rally you guys. Dude, run it up. Guys, I just wanna say this has been a fun roller coaster of seven days of work. I'm very proud of all of you. Mike, thank you for coming all the way out here. Welding the f out of this truck. Really appreciate it. Without you, we probably would have been sinking by now. Like, this has been more insane hey. project than high low, so like. Three, Props five, to all of us, okay? Okay, on three. Baja Blast. Get the f in here. One, two, three. Baja, Baja Blaster! We're about to throw the first front suspension into the truck. Hopefully everything lines up and works out. What happened? Our big ass suspension doesn't fit. Runs into this upper bar on the shock mounting tower. Well, well. All right, we've got a new plan and it's a good one. And it's what we really wanted to do from the beginning, but we were concerned about clearing the tie rod and the steering linkage. We are gonna put the shock mount, the lower shock mount at the front of the I-beam, which is gonna pretty much solve everything, which is great. Yep. Gives us a better shock angle. We've got clearance up here. We'll have more clearance down there. And the only thing we're gonna need to do is modify this tab a little bit. Wow, we've got radius arms, beams, and our suspension in place. Those are three big things. Just like the big three, our new podcast coming in March every Wednesday. It's automotive news, baby. Take a deep dive. All right, I'm working on installing the last can for the last bump stop, so that means I have to weld the can to the truck where it's stationary and the strike plate to the beam so that, you know, the bump stop has something to land on. The end of the bump stop is basically the thickness of these two hockey pucks. That's why I have them there to simulate the bump stop at full bump. The only minor concern is that we'll catch this bolt head on the way down, but I think we'll be clear, and if we're not, we can make clearance. So I'm gonna tack this in place right now, then check that clearance. Whoa. Hey we didn't clear it, so we're gonna have to grind the edge of that bracket, which is no big deal. Okay, we've got clearance for our bolt head and our strike pad, so that's good. That's one more thing, hopefully permanently off the list. After all that battling with the torch and the puller and everything, we finally got off our stock Pitman arm right here. This is what connects your steering linkage to your steering box. We did all that so we can install this guy, a new Pitman arm with a four inch drop. Because we're adding such a massive ride height increase, we need our steering linkage to be more in line with our tie rods with the steering linkage and the I-beams, that front on view is gonna look insane. You're gonna be able to see Mike's handiwork and uh, craftsmanship on full display. It'll be awesome. Now that Nolan's got the four inch drop pitman arm installed, now it's time to deal with our steering linkages. Now we are gonna try to reuse our OEM steering linkages, but they're too short. So we're gonna try to use them by cutting them up, sleeving them, making them longer, then throwing them in the truck. Whoa. Who the hell did that? Not me. And we forgot to film it. But it's already done, looks great. They're lengthened and uh, the truck should be able to, you know, go left and right. All I gotta do is throw this very last ball joint in and then we are in business. Okay, one of the last things that we need to do for the suspension is install these limit straps. I've got the tabs down here ready to go onto the I-beam like so. This upper hole is gonna meet up with this hole up here. You'll notice that right now it doesn't, and that's on purpose because we want the limit straps to limit the suspension before they reach full droop where everything's maxed out. So we're basically gonna weld these on, then we'll pick the suspension up about an inch. So as we lower this down onto the wheels and tires, the suspension will start to compress and we will eventually have the right distance between our lower mount and the upper hole for our limit straps. We'll throw the hardware in it and then we will be limited. Once we get the limit straps attached, then we'll pick the truck back up and if we did everything right, they should be taut at full droop because they will be limiting the down travel of the suspension. And if they don't become taut, I'm jumping off the roof. I'll catch you. Thanks, Jimmy. Wow, 
solid. Solid. We built a Civic, then we crafted a beautiful painting of that Civic. Then we made a shirt of the beautiful painting of the beautiful Civic we made, and it's available now at DonutMedia.com. Check it out. All right, this truck clearly looks radically different than it did just a week ago, and we've completed everything on our stupid little list over there. We put $17,000 worth of suspension into a $500 truck, not to mention like 20 pounds of welding wire. The thing is awesome, but it doesn't run and it doesn't stop. So we're gonna fix that in the next episode so we can get this thing out to the desert. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And make sure you follow Mike on Instagram at Mike the Day. Check out his X5 build on ECS Tuning's YouTube channel and check us out next time when we get this thing running, stopping, and driving in the desert. See you then.